Hey, what's up, my guys, and welcome back to Gearbox. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a bike that I just built the other day. This is the Magnum Onyx motorcycle. Now, during the stream that I did, we did a lot of testing, a lot of building, and our first iteration at a bike was this one here. Essentially, the big difference between these two is that with this design, we were actually trying to use seat tilting. When it came down to it, it did do something, but it wasn't very productive. That iteration came to our next vehicle, which used a more compact engine, which allowed us to make the bike a bit smaller. We did quite a bit of work getting the front geometry to work as good as we could get it during the time we had on stream. And then eventually, after the stream was done, I sat down, drove this thing around a lot, and tinkered with it until I got this. So differences between what was on stream and what I did in my free time. Of course, I decorated it up a bit, gave it some functionality with headlights, taillights, markers, all of that. But I also redid the front wheel geometry to be quite a bit more stable, as well as removed the flywheel from the engine. That way I could reinforce the engine quite a bit better. That way I could put a lot more load on the engine without it just wanting to explode. And that has led to this bike being just a little bit faster. Comically so, I will add. But, for the sake of this, let's talk about how this bike actually works and how it actually drives. So things to note on the front geometry, the wheel itself, or the entire front forks I should say, don't have anything that return it to center. You might notice that there is a torsion spring up here. However, it has zero spring rate. It is purely there for its dampening ability. So there is a wheel that's embedded in the front forks, which is what you actually use to turn it. It works very similar to our station wagon. And then it's just this front forks geometry, both how much it's tilted and the positioning of the wheel on this front fork that give it its steering characteristics and recenter the wheel. It's a little complex and honestly, I don't fully understand it myself, but it works. And what it allows it to do is the wheel not only recenters, but as the vehicle is accelerating, it wants to pull the bike upright. Add to that, the weights that are buried in the wheels give it a lot of centrifugal force, therefore give you a lot of like dampening to your roll. That way, when you're starting to lean into a corner between the wheel wanting to right itself and the gyroscopic precession from the wheels themselves, it's really stable and you have quite a bit of control going through the corners. From there, the back wheel is just pretty much power. It does have a weight in it as well, but it doesn't have anything special that it's doing. It's just a swing arm with a wheel where the power is actually put to the ground. And this is all being powered by a VR2 cylinder engine. Essentially, the cylinders are right next to each other. However, it's not a normal inline two because the actual um, crank case is perpendicular to the headers. So it's a little bit different, but this does function very similar to a two cylinder inline. Uh, when it comes to its timing. It's just a little bit off, but it does give it a really nice sound when it's actually running. So let's grab this. Not that. Let's put that back. Grab all of this, take it to the ground. And if I press, let's hop in here, press G, or run the starter. It's actually started all of these bikes because they all use the same starter key. And it has a really nice, like, just rumble to it and i love the way this sounds this two cylinder while small is still more than enough power to actually push the spike around that power is being transferred through some belts and a two-speed gearbox the first gear is mostly here just to get the bike up to speed so that it can start balancing and for the most part you're almost always driving in the second gear so let's talk controls talk how to drive this because it is a bike and it's kind of complicated. While we're sitting still, if you press A and D, you will notice the wheel goes the wrong direction. That's because at speed, you will be counter steering. 
So at low speed, you can still technically steer this. Now you have to do. You have to be very careful because as soon as you get any sort of speed, you'll start to get counter steer and you'll start to roll the bike. So just puttering around, it's fine. Dibby Ace and D does what you'd expect it to. Other than that, starter is G. Kickstand is F here on the side. It doesn't really hold the bike up, but on slopes it can help as well as when you're coming to a stop. If you just lean yourself into the stand as you slow to a stop, you're less likely to crash the bike. H is headlights. And you do have a little dash light up here that lights up the speedometer and RPM. And well, shift is just high low. I don't really have an indicator for it because you're rarely actually shifting other than the initial acceleration. So let's go ahead and see if we can get ourselves started. Raise the kickstand, second gear, and now A and D are the correct way around. See if we can get out of here without crashing. Oh, low speed maneuvering is not the strong suit of bikes. That's fine. We'll just come out here to the little flat spot. So now that we have a little bit more room to maneuver, let's do this all again. G, start the engine, start rolling, press F to raise the kickstand, and second gear. At this point, the bike should be stable. We're right around 30 miles an hour. 30 miles an hour is kind of the cutoff. Any lower and it's really unstable. Any higher and, well, you're stable, but your turning is reduced. And you will get to see the top speed here. 69. Nice. It was not intentional, but it did work out that way, and I'm kind of happy about it. Okay. Actually steering this bike. When you're coming up to a corner, you really want to lean into it as hard as you can. Of course, you do have to be careful you don't, like, clip the ground or anything. And once the bike begins to turn, you can just use your brake and throttle to control it through the corner. This is not a race bike. It's not particularly fast. It is a pretty nice cruiser, though. So you're keeping it in between about 30 and 60 for most situations. So if the bike does start to lean too much, you can always lean out of it using A and D. Or you can just accelerate and the bike will want to right itself just because of how the front steering geometry is. That being said, it is still a bike and you still have to be careful. It is a little bit of a task to learn, unfortunately. And some of these corners like these are really tight and you do have to take them quite slow. So give it a good amount of tilt, pull the brakes in and around we go. This bike can complete every corner that is on this large loop. The only one I still have struggles with is the S up there at the top of the hill, which is the one that always sneaks up on me, and even in cars can be difficult. So trying to do that one in a bike is especially so. Now, considering this is my second iteration of a bike, I'm really happy with how well this works. Just driving it is fun and feature it's fully functional in first person. You can just ride it like this. And I even have a little indicator on the tank so when I'm hitting the brakes, you'll see it flashes in the glass. So you can actually see when I'm hitting the brakes as well while in first person. And that's less so a functionality for the driver itself and more so something I added on here so while I'm recording, you can actually tell when I'm hitting the brakes because I'm doing a lot of key presses just to keep this thing stable. Now I'm focusing because of this corner. This one's one that's tricky. Heavy lean. Pull the brakes. Try and keep it above 31. There we go. And out of the corner we come. One thing to note while driving this is because of its leaning on the wheels, you can really feel the flat spot in the tire. Um, all the wheels in this game are technically square.
Which makes sense, it's it's a video game. Just how geometry works when it comes to games and polygon counts and all that fun stuff. The bike does fine despite it, but it is noticeable once you start getting to center, the bike wants to snap upright, which is kind of a good thing when it comes to low speed maneuverability, but also it can be a bit jarring and unexpected. And here's that corner that always comes in and sneaks up on me, so let's slow down a little bit. I do want to come at this with some speed. Don't want to come at it too slow or we will just crash. Heavy lean. Heavier lean. Oh, coming downhill. Oh, that was clean. Very clean. And out we come. So, if you do want to watch the building behind this bike, I did do some of it off camera, of course, like I mentioned. But the majority of it was actually built on stream, so you can see it there. It is a very long stream at 7 hours, hence why I like to do showcases of what I've been building on those streams. But, at the end of the day, Regardless of, like, how long this took, which is a very long time, <laughs> I'm really happy with the outcome. It's just fun to drive around. It's a little bit challenging, but not so much that it's difficult. It's just you have to focus. You have to pay attention. It's just fun. It. I have no other way to describe it, but challenging and fun. Let's get back out to this rear angle so you can see the bike as a whole. Oh. oh no, wasn't paying attention. Off the grass we go. It does have suspension, so it can handle this okay. It's not built for off-road, but it can it can take some time in the grass. Let's get back on the road. <laughs> The, the most complex part of all of this was just trying to balance everything that's going on. Because in a traditional car, you've got, like, three or four different points of, like, things that affect steering. Wheel grip, turn angle, um, center of mass, that sort of stuff. In a bike, you have all of that, plus, like, five more things because of just how the front geometry on the wheel works. Like I said at the beginning, there's nothing holding this wheel still. This wheel, the front wheel rotates on its own. But that's what gives it its stability. Because of the geometry of the front fork, any forces imparted on the bike are transferred through it. And the geometry, in this weird way that physics is, just interprets those inputs and corrects the bike's like direction, corrects the bike's roll, and... <laughs> makes it surprisingly stable despite the fact it only has two wheels and I'm taking corners with a massive lean. So yeah. Other than the two little things of like the weights that are implanted in the wheel and just the handlebar being tucked away because it's I, I wish this game had proper, like, bike handlebars that had leverage to it, or just, like, a crank or something, or a lever. That would be a good block, just a lever block. Um, but other than those two things, this is just... Everything you see is as it is. There's nothing hidden. There's no secrets. There's no, like, gyroscope or, like, automated system. It's just a bike with an engine front steering geometry that is complex as all can be and it works oh so this version and the uh, stream version are both in the workshop 
as the Magnum Onyx for the one that came from stream, and then the Magnum Onyx Revised, which is the version I'm actually driving right now. So if you want to take a look at them, they're both on the workshop. Um, and that, that kind of came comes back to the little community post I made a moment ago about do you guys prefer to see things as they were from stream or do you like to see them after the fact? Because to be honest, I could consider this bike that I'm riding a version 3 with how much modifications I did. Even though a good chunk of it was aesthetic, there's so much tweaking I did to it. The front geometry is completely new. Um, the wheelbase is significantly shorter. I did so much tweaking with the suspension, the engine, got rid of the like the flywheel from it. And that's kind of where my question came from was, despite this being built from the original Magnum Onyx from Stream, it has had so much modification that I could, it's kind of difficult to call it the same vehicle. Oh. Oh. And as soon as we come around this corner, that will be a full loop with zero crashes. There we go. Let's get her upright. Start to slow her down. Oh, I'm getting off the grass. Start to slow her down. Put down the kickstand. Lean into the kickstand and... We are done. So... I am extremely happy with this build, and I hope you guys did enjoy this little look. Um, like I said, there is a stream if you want to watch the building of that version, which is, at its core, the same bike. But, I lost my train of thought. But, um, if you want to actually drive this bike or that bike over there, they are both on the workshop as the Magnum Onyx. This one is the Magnum Onyx Revised. That being said, I'm going to end it here. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.